Hi everyone, so uh, in this uh, presentation I'm going to talk about uh, speech production, uh, which is one of the main, uh, the first and one of the main uh, elements to tackle uh, in a course like uh, sociolinguistics. And in order to explain how speech production takes place, there are a number of theories of speech production that attempt to answer questions like what steps must human beings follow to retrieve the linguistic representations they need to communicate their ideas? How do they organize those representations? How do they translate those representations into a form that the motor system can use to generate the actual physical gestures that create speech sounds? The first main theory that is advocated in order to explain speech production is the one provided by Griffin and Ferreira, 2006, in which they explain that speech production involves three sorts of mental processes. There is first conceptualization, second formulation, and then articulation. And in fact, these processes, mental processes, are well elaborated and have been well elaborated, first of all, by uh, one of the main theories that try to explain speech production. It is the one uh, called uh, the Weaver double plus theory that is uh, advocated by Level and his colleagues in 1999. And in fact, uh, Levelot is one of the main professors in the University of Nijmegen in uh, Holland uh, and I had a chance to go to that university but I didn't meet the guy uh, but uh, to explain this theory I'm going to do two things first of all is to go with you through the uh, terms and concepts included in this schematic uh, overview of this Weaver double plus model. So as you can see, there are two components, main components in it. There is the first of all the abstract components, which you can see on the top in gray. And then from this abstract component, we go into the more concrete component that is coming after uh, in gray as well. And in between them, there are some concepts. Mainly, the two we're going to refer to here are the lemmas, or the mental lexicon, and then the syllabary. So, as you can see in this schema, so first of all, in the, in the, in the abstract level, there is what is referred to as rhetorical, semantic, syntactic system, conceptual preparation, preverbal message, and then grammatical encoding. And here comes the role of the lemma, the mental lexicon, which tries to reformulate those abstract concepts into more concrete uh, uh, concepts. And these concrete concepts involve the following phonological phonetic system, morphological encoding, phonological score, phonetic encoding, articulatory score and articulation. And these concrete concepts here they involve a very main operation which is referred to by Leveled et al. 1999 as syllabary. And then comes the result which is the overt speech. So in order to explain in details this schema of the Weaver Double Plus model, I'm going to read a nice paragraph that I found in the book I gave you which is called Introduction to Psycholinguistics by Matthew uh, G. Traxler, published in and uh, updated in 2012. This paragraph summarizes this whole process or the way how this model tries to explain the speech production. To summarize how the Weaver double plus model works, production begins with a set of ideas that the speaker wishes to express. Here we have the abstract level, conceptual preparation. In the next step, those ideas are tied to lexical concepts because the language may have specific words for some of the ideas, but may require combinations of words 
to express other ideas. After a set of lexical concepts has been activated, lemmas that correspond to those lexical concepts become activated. And no need to tell you that we have already explained in the class what we mean by lemmas. I don't have, I don't have, I don't want to go back to it now. Uh, to continue, lemmas that correspond to those lexical concepts become activated. Activating lemmas provides information about the morphological properties of words, including information about who, how words can be combined. After a set of morphemes has been activated and organized into a sequence, the speech sounds or the phonemes that are required can be activated and placed in a sequence. Phonological encoding involves the activation of a metrical structure and syllabification. And that's why you have there the word I told you is very important, which you refer to as syllabary. So I repeat, phonological encoding involves the activation of a metrical structure and syllabification, organizing a set of phonemes into syllable-sized groups. Whether the specific phonemes come from the same morpheme or not, or and word or not. The outcome of this process is a set of phonological words consisting of a sequence of syllable-sized frames. During phonetic encoding, the speech production system consults a set of stored representations of specific syllables. The system activates the appropriate syllable representations and places them in the appropriate positions in the frame. This preparation, rep representation is used by the motor system to create a phonetic gestural score, which is the representation used by the motor system to plan the actual muscle movements articulation that will create sounds that the listener will perceive as speech. To summarize this uh, Weaver Double Plus model advocated by Level at all 1999, it is stated that concepts point you to lemmas. Lemmas point you to the morphological information you need to combine lemmas into larger phrases. Then, morphological encoding points you to the speech sounds, phonemes, which you need to express specific sets of lemmas in specific forms and hence the articulation. Concerning the evidence that was relied on in order to support and back up this Weaver Laplace model, there are, they, uh, it comes from three kinds of studies. First, speech errors. Second, tip of the tongue experiences or taught experiences for short finally picture naming and picture word interference studies and I'm going to go back to these uh, into the following presentations thank you very much